Hello everybody. Okay, this is a tutorial on how to play Castles the Card Game by Gunpowder Studios. I'm going to dive straight in because I'd like to keep it as short as possible. Okay, first thing to do is to just pop through the pack and delete the four Kingster and Queenie white cards. You see these ones here? Okay. And you give each player one of those. They have to protect these. This is a two player example. So I'm gonna do just two player example play here. So what I'm gonna do then is you're gonna shuffle the remainder of the cards. The packs do come pre-shuffled, but I would suggest shuffling them anyway. Okay, so it's a little bit of a tight space here. I just wanted to show you how it works. Right, the next thing to do is to give each player six face down wall cards. This is their castle wall. You have to protect this. When this is gone, your Kingster and Queenie are sent running for the hills or dead, or whatever, and it's the end of the game. You're out of the game. Okay. Six. Face down, wall cards to each player. Let's uh, make a little bit of space here. So we've got a bit of room for the pickup piles in the middle of the table. All right. All right. Now what you want to do is you want to give everybody five hand cards. One, two, three, four, five. Don't show these to anybody. One, two, three, four, five. Both players now have six wall cards, the Kingster and the Queenie, and five hand cards. Put the remainder of the pack down in the middle of the table. This is the pickup pile, and the discard pile will go next to it. When it's empty, you just shuffle and reuse again. Every single wall card that gets destroyed, or every single card that gets played, goes on the discard pile. You cannot pick up from the discard pile either. Okay, let's start playing. It says so in the rules, grumpiest player goes first, but you can choose youngest player, whatever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play as the first player, and it's gonna be the second player. Let's have a look at my cards. I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. The object of the game is obviously to destroy your player's castle, but there's a few ways of doing this. You can use weapons, or you can use catapults. I just happen to have a catapult card, which is great. If you do use a catapult card, what you do is you place the card next to you when you want to use it. You cannot bring it back in once it's out on the table. And then you look at the little numbers in the corners of the cards. This one happens to have three, eight, three, eight, okay? But what I'm looking for is two cards, a minimum of two cards that add up to 10. So you can have three cards as well, four cards. As long as it adds up to exactly 10, then you can fire it. The cards cease to be and they start becoming big piles of rocks and you can throw them at people. Watch it, they can throw them back as well. Anyway, we don't have any cards that add up to 10. Unfortunately, we've got, like I say, three, eight, three, eight. If I added two and an eight, that'd be two, that'd be great. So we're gonna have to use the cards in another way. We're gonna do ground attacks here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my gunpowder on this particular player. I can lay two of these. Now, if I had a flaming arrow or any other player had a flaming arrow, they would only need to ignite one of those and it would start a chain reaction, kaboom. Those two wall cards would be destroyed. The way they are destroyed is you literally just pick up the cards that have been played and the wall cards and you put them on the discard pile, okay? Let's leave those there like that. I've also got a spy card. Spy cards are fantastic because you can uncover some of the wall cards, uh, some of the great cards that are hidden in the walls and you can use them as many times as you want if you can remember where they are. Okay, let me just go with that one there. So what you do is you lay the spy card face down and you take that card into your hand. You can also do it in your own walls as well. I just happened to have picked up another spy card. Okay, let's go for one in my wall. Let's go for this one here. I'm gonna put the spy card down and I'm gonna pick it up. Oh, you are joking. Okay, I've got another spy card. Don't worry, there's not that many spy cards in the game. If this is a spy card, I will be surprised. No, it's not. Okay, I happen to have picked up another catapult. Oh, two catapults. If I get three catapults, I do double the damage. That means I destroy two adjacent walls. So you've got to make sure that your players or your opponents do not get more than two catapults. I think that's pretty much the end of my go. I've got a water card, which is a defensive card. Um, and then we switch over. You say, that's the end of my go. I put my cards down. At the beginning of my next go, I will pick up so I have five cards. I always start with five cards. It's now the next player's go. Let's have a quick look at what they've got. Okay, they've got a few other cards. Oh, they've got a nice moat card here. You have to play this straight away. That goes in front of your castle or around to the side. Now, I, the other player, player one, cannot lay any ground-based attack. So I wouldn't have been able to lay those gunpowders if they've got a moat. I can't get across the moat unless I had a counter-attacking card, which is a boat, moat and a boat. Okay, so let's leave that like that. So they've got a, little, a line of defense there, which is great. They've got a couple of thieves as well. So. 
They haven't got a catapult, but on the bottom of every card, it's got a little description of what you can do, and a couple of cards, if you play them together, they have different effects. So for instance, two thieves can steal a catapult. So we play the, we play the cards, no, let's say that's around there, let's say this is the discard pile. They're gonna steal my catapult. So this player, player number two, is gonna lay two thief cards played together, they steal my catapult. That's not very nice, is it? That relieves them with a Jacko and a Crucible. A crucible is for reflecting shots. Just read the bottom of the cards, it's really easy. Jackos are for rebuilding walls if you've got a hole in your wall. You put your Jacko in there and at the end of your next go, that wall is replenished. He's thrown on the discard pile and they, are, they take another wall card. Okay, let's put that back because they haven't got any holes in their walls just yet. So they've got quite a good hand there. They've got a Jacko, so they also kill saboteurs. If there's a saboteur on the wall, I'll show you a saboteur in a minute. They can bump them on the head and, and knock them out. Okay, so that's the end of their go. So they're doing quite well. They've got a moat, oh, but unfortunately they've got a couple of gunpowders. So it's my go now. I've got two cards. Let's choose up to another five. Take five cards. Whoa, look at this. Okay, great. I haven't got a catapult. Oh yes, I've just picked up a new catapult, fantastic. Have I got two cards that add up to 10? No, not yet. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay another gunpowder. It's only gonna take one flaming arrow to take out all of those walls. That's gonna be pretty nasty. I've also got a saboteur, I'm gonna lay that on their wall. At the end of their next go, if they don't kill him with the Jacko, that wall has disappeared. What else have I got? I've got a three and an eight. It doesn't add up to 10. Unfortunately, that's the end of my go. If this player had laid a gunpowder on my wall though, I could have used that water to douse it. And it would have gone, but that's just an example. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's the end of my go. I'm gonna do one more go, and then I think you've got the idea of it. And they pick up another three cards. So. That Jacko we were talking about. Let's fire a catapult. I really want to fire a catapult, okay? So five, what adds up to eight? Okay, I'll tell you what adds, sorry, adds up to 10. What adds up to 10? Let's fire a catapult. This catapult here is out in play. There's a five they've got in the corner. There's a little rock with a five. There's a three, that's eight, and a two. They are gonna go ka-chunk, fire. They're gonna fire at any one of my walls. They choose, they lay the cards down, they say which card they're gonna destroy. But, first of all, me as a player, number one, have I got a crucible? No, if I did have a crucible, I could reflect it back. It's like ping pong, it's great fun. No, so they choose, say that wall there, hole in my wall. That's how you fire a catapult. Anyway, every single card's got its own little description at the bottom and it's very easy to play. You just keep playing until it's the, uh, the other person's lost all their walls. It's really good fun. Eventually, you just knock them down. Knock them down. Kaboom, imagine that. If, look, I've got a flaming arrow. Let's play that. That's really good, actually. That's a good example to show you. Play a flaming arrow. It blows up that one. It blows up that one. Nasty. It blows up that one. It's really good fun. And there's lots, lots of different strategical ways of playing it. So anyway, you got any questions, let us know. That is the basis of the new Castles card game. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much.